Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist chemistry video looking at the principles of dynamic equilibrium in the context of chemical reactions. Now the term equilibrium probably comes up the idea of balance in most people's minds, but I'm going to try and give you a really clear definition of dynamic equilibrium in a chemical context and then give you a really simple initial example of a situation where you might experience a dynamic equilibrium in the home. So let's start with the key definition of exactly what a dynamic equilibrium actually is. So in a sealed system, a reversible reaction can reach a state known as a dynamic equilibrium. Once a reversible reaction in a sealed system reaches a dynamic equilibrium, you will find that the rate of the forward reaction will be exactly equal to the rate of the reverse or backwards reaction. However, the concentrations of reactant and product molecules will remain constant. This is the textbook definition of dynamic equilibrium and should be memorized. So I did say I'd give you a really simple example of a dynamic equilibrium in the home. So consider a damp towel. If you put a damp towel out on a washing line to dry, then water molecules will evaporate from the surface of the towel and the towel will become dry over time. That is an example of an open system and not a dynamic equilibrium. However, if you put your damp towel in the washing machine and close the door of the washing machine, but then leave it for a few hours and come back, you'll find the towel is still damp. Now, why is that? It's because we had a dynamic equilibrium situation going on inside the washing machine in that environment. Inside the closed washing machine, water molecules are still evaporating and vaporizing from the surface of the towel due to heat energy being present, but a proportion of those water molecules will then be contacting the surface of the damp towel and turning back into a liquid. So you have an, a dynamic equilibrium. Molecules are constantly in motion, but there's an equal rate at which water molecules are vaporizing and water molecules are condensing back onto the surface of the towel. Okay, so I'd like to kind of explain a dynamic equilibrium situation using a, a sort of an animation, a simplified example. So here I have two reactants. Reactant A is the blue square and reactant B is the green square. Hopefully you agree this is a high concentration situation. We have a large proportion of reactant A and reactant B molecules in this particular volume. Therefore, we're going to have a fast initial rate of reaction because there's gonna be a high frequency of collisions between reactant particles at this high concentration. That will mean a greater proportion of successful collisions will be taking place because there's a greater frequency or number of collisions per second taking place. I'm going to represent that fast initial forward rate of reaction with this arrow here. Okay, now you would have noticed that we have some purple product molecules formed, represented by the purple squares on the right hand side. Now this is a reversible reaction, so it's possible that some of those purple product molecules can decompose or break down reforming the original reactant molecules in the process. Now, the rate at which this reverse or backwards reaction is taking place relative to the forward reaction will be slower because we have a low concentration of product molecules compared to the high concentration of reactant molecules. So I'll represent that with a smaller arrow going backwards. The forward reaction is still relatively fast because we have a high concentration of reactant molecules still present, therefore we'll still have a high number of collisions per second, which is driving the forward reaction. Now eventually this system will reach a state of dynamic equilibrium. When the concentration of product molecules rises to the required level, then the rate at which the reverse reaction is taking place will genuinely be equal the rate at which the forward reaction is taking place. Now I want to emphasize this is a dynamic equilibrium, a dynamic system. Molecules are in constant flux and in constant motion. Reactant molecules are constantly colliding to form product, but simultaneously product molecules are decomposing to reform reactant molecules. And the rate at which those two processes are happening are now equal to each other. I also want to emphasize how this animation perfectly encapsulates the principles of a dynamic equilibrium because the rate of the forward reaction is now equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. 
but the concentrations of reactants and products cannot be defined as equal to each other because if you look at this situation, there are more reactant molecules than there are product molecules. There are eight reactant molecules compared to four product molecules. It would be um, misleading to say they have the same or equal concentrations, but they do have constant concentrations. There will always be proportionally about eight molecules on this left-hand side and proportionally about four molecules of products on the right-hand side. Their concentrations are remaining constant because the rate at which we're forming the product is equal to the rate at which we're forming the reactant. They're never really changing these, these constant levels and therefore the concentrations remain constant. So hopefully the animation helps to support that definition from earlier on. Just before I elucidate on this new symbol which has appeared, if you found this video useful or helpful, please do think about giving it a like, maybe think about subscribing to the channel or even ringing the bell to keep notified of our future content and videos. As always, your support is hugely appreciated and helps to motivate me to push me forward to make more and more of these videos. So this symbol here is known as the reversible symbol or sometimes the equilibrium symbol, and it is a simplified version of my two directional arrows, which shows that one, this is a reversible reaction, uh, but also that this could be considered as an equilibrium condition, a situation that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So when you see this symbol, it will mean either reversal reaction or an equilibrium situation depending on the nature of the question you're being asked. If they're asking you about um, a reversal reaction, then this symbol is used, or if you're dealing with an equilibrium situation, this symbol is also used. So that about does it for this video. Thank you so much for your attention, and as a little teaser for future content, I am planning to follow us up with a video on a specific equilibrium reaction and Le Chatelier's principle, and I'm hoping to put um, a card in this video to link you to that video when it's made. In the meantime, do check out other content on our channel which will appear here. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Take care. Goodbye.